and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we will give thanks for baptism on this day, the baptism of our Lord that we celebrate, but also through the season of Epiphany. I invite you to find a bowl of water at this time so that you may participate and marking your forehead with the cross of Christ at the end. Let's begin. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let's give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and the word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants to all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be the honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to put your hand in the water and mark your forehead the mark of Christ. You are a child of God, beloved and forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters, immense us in your grace. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. salvation baptized into the death of Christ they are a new creation through Christ's redemption they will stand among the glorious heaven band of every tribe and nation with one accord, O oh God, we pray, 
grant us your Holy Spirit. Help us in our infirmity, through Jesus' blood and merit. Grant us to grow in grace each day, by holy baptism that we may eternal life inherit. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Paulus was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard of the Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who has to come after him, that is, in Jesus. And hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together, there are about 12 of them. And our gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean country and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Here ends the gospel reading. Hi kiddos, so good to have you joining us for worship today. Uh, you will uh, maybe have some water at your house. I invite you to kind of go fill a cup with water or a little bowl. I'll wait here. All right, maybe you got some little, some water. Well, at the beginning of worship, we gave thanks for the gift of baptism. You have probably been baptized, maybe your siblings, maybe your parents, your grandparents. I've been baptized. You've all been baptized into the name of Jesus, and we have all been forgiven. Now, I invite you to take that water, get it wet, and then mark the cross on your forehead. As you do so, remember that with that cross on your forehead, God has baptized you in the water, but also claimed you as a child of God and called you beloved. Means, means you are well loved. Sometimes we can forget that we are well loved. Sometimes we can forget that other people deserve to be loved as well. That they too are a child of God. But I invite you to make that cross on your forehead Whenever you're playing outside in the summer with water and the pool, when you are in the shower, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're doing the dishes, mark your cross on your forehead, remembering that you are a beloved child of God. And the more that we remember that we are loved, the more able we are to love others as children of God. Will you all pray with me, please? 
Dear God, help us to remember that you love us, that you care for us, that we are children of God. Help us to love others as your children of God too. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Take care kiddos, you guys have a great day. Have you seen, have you heard? I asked this of Sue when I called into the office. I had lost track of time and it was now two in the afternoon. I sat down for lunch and turned on the TV only to find myself paralyzed. Unable to stop watching as American citizens broke down barriers, smashed windows and looted the offices of our Capitol building. It was evident that there is something broken in our community, our people, our nation. Then in a message on Wednesday, Bishop Leela Ortiz of the Metro DC Synod of the ELCA echoed my own experience when she said I was paralyzed. But she was not referring to the Capitol, but to something she had seen in the prayer garden of a DC church. She had gathered that morning with other clergy and congregants by the statue of Martin Luther at Luther Place to pray in what she called a solemn, peaceful witness on a day when tensions and tempers were expected to run high. While they were praying, a man dressed in animal skins and his companion broke into their circle and proceeded to reenact the murder of George Floyd and slain racial slurs. There is something broken within us as a community, as a people, as a nation. This week I have heard from Grace members, family, and friends who have told me that the events of Wednesday have left them speechless. Some even compared it to that of another 9-11, another day when the fabric of American life shifted. For some, it seemed as though there had been an innocence, an earnest faith in who we are as a nation, a people that seemed to have been taken when the Capitol was violated. There are also those within our community who support what has been done and what happened on Wednesday afternoon. There is something fractured within and among us and in the face of this brokenness, we must feel paralyzed, wondering what shall we say? Where do we go from here? Perhaps we can begin today by going to scripture where we hear of the baptism of our Lord. We hear of a people who were brought out of the city, their home, away from the temple, the center of their spiritual worship. They come into the wilderness. They come to hear John the Baptist where they are implored to repent, reorient their heart toward God, to be washed clean. It's as though the people gathering by the river needed to remove themselves from all that they knew, all that was familiar. It's as though the disorientation of the environment around them enabled them to hear John's call more clearly, and allowed them to respond more easily to the invitation to recenter, reorient themselves to God. It's here that Jesus wades into the waters of baptism. The question often raised is why? Why was Jesus baptized? Not because he himself is in need of repentance. He is sinless, perfect, holy after all, right? So why did he wade into the waters of Jordan along with all the other sinners? Why did he participate in a ritual that would associate him with these seedy characters and possibly harm his reputation? It was a radical act of solidarity. In the words of Debbie Thomas, an act of stepping into intimate, inextricable, shameful relationship with sinful humanity. 
Jesus stepped into the same water we stand in and wedded his reputation and his destiny to ours. And the curtain was torn. The separation between us and God severed with the baptism of God's beloved son. In the waters of baptism, we are marked with the cross, sealed by the Holy Spirit and claimed as a beloved child of God, loved and forgiven. We are given a new identity, a place of belonging, a community, a purpose. We are born anew. We are challenged to no longer be conformed to the expectations, pressures, and limits of this world. As water fills every crevice it flows over, our baptismal identity seeps into every aspect of our life. How we work, how we live in relationship with one another, how we respond to the events of this past week, and the convictions we hold. In her message on Wednesday, Bishop Ortiz called upon the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. from his sermon, Transform Nonconformist, inspired by Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Quote, In spite of this prevailing tendency to conform, we as Christians have a mandate to be nonconformists. The Apostle Paul, who knew the inner realities of the Christian faith, counseled, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are called to be people of conviction, not conformity, of moral nobility, not social respectability. We are commanded to live differently and according to a higher loyalty. If the church of Jesus Christ is to regain once more its power, message, and authentic reign, it must conform only to the demands of the gospel. End quote. Reflecting on King's words, Bishop Ortiz said, The demands of the gospel always bend towards justice. The demands of the gospel never justify the killing of a community, of a body, or a spirit. The demands of the gospel recognize humanity and each and every one and each of God's beloved human creation. The demands of the gospel require dignity and respect for stranger, for neighbor, and for creation. The demands of the gospel speak to life and life abundant. In the muddy waters of Jordan, we have been wedded with Jesus and invited to follow him as his disciples. Our immersion in the baptismal waters begin the transformation of who we are and our response to the demands of the gospel. In some ways, this past year has felt like we have been brought into the wilderness like those who gathered around the River Jordan removed from the routines, traditions, places, and people that bring us comfort, that are familiar. We have witnessed protests, division, so much grief, gross violations of human dignity. And now, as we watched Americans terrorize a nation, some of the certainty and faith we once had in our government and each other has been shaken. So what are we to do? What shall we say? In the midst of this disorientation, are we perhaps being invited to reorient ourselves to God, to repent and turn our hearts to God, to have a renewing of our minds? Let us go back to the beginning and our baptism to the promises and presence of God from which neither we nor creation will ever be separated ever again. Today and tomorrow as we move forward, let us cling to the covenant God makes with us in baptism, God's promise of mercy and grace, our own promises we make too, which is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ, the word and deed, to serve all people,
following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Does that sound daunting right now? <laughs> yes, paralyzing even, especially that last one, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. As Debbie Thomas wrote this week, embracing the story of Jesus' baptism and our own, we also embrace the truth that in the waters of baptism, we become interconnected and interdependent on God and each other. And that God's promises make a greater claim on us than any other loyalty, gender, race, tribe, or politics. And to live into that promise means risks, but it also means life. We belong to God and to each other, the community of believers, not the chaos and violence we have witnessed these last days and weeks in our country. But that does not mean we are free to ignore them or pretend they have no hold or effect on our lives either. So when the questions come, what shall we say? Where do we go from here? We come to the font and hear God's promises to us. The blessing of being called beloved, the promise of a savior committed not to his own power, but to joining himself to the powerless, the broken and afraid. A God and savior who will rip open the division between heaven and earth so that all spaces and people might be called holy if we would open our eyes to the wonder and scandal of this blessing. We go back to the beginning and hear the question asked at our baptism and confirmation. Will you continue to live in the covenant God made with you in baptism? And we say yes, with the help of God and each other. We will. Amen. We are the branches. We are the branches. You're the vine. You hold us together. We are your church, Lord. You are the groom and we're the bride. You're the foundation. You're the foundation of our life. We are rooted in your love. We will not be shaken. We are rooted in your truth. We will not be taken. Oh, how deep, how long, how wide, how strong are the roots of the love of God. You are the rock, Lord. You are the rock on which we stand. We will not be moved. You are the Father, so every woman, every man, sisters and brothers, we're sisters and brothers in your love. We are rooted in your love, we will not be shaken. We are rooted in your truth, we will not be taken. Oh, how deep, how long, how wide, how strong are the roots of the love of God. So let the Come down, let the thunder sound We will not be moved No, no Come see the tree of life How the blood of Christ has watered Watered, watered us to our roots We are rooted in your love We will not be shaken We are rooted in your truth We will not be taken Oh, how deep, how long, how wide, how strong are the roots of the love of God? So let the rains come down, let the thunder sound, we will not be moved. No, no, come see the tree of life, how the blood of Christ has watered, watered, watered us to our roots. We are rooted not be shaken. We are rooted in your truth. We will 
will not be taken Oh, how deep, how long, how wide How strong are the roots of the love of God Let us pray and give thanks to God whose voice, which is full of majesty, power, and strength, gave rise to night and day and cried out, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased, when Jesus was baptized by John, as recounted in the book of Mark. We have been anointed with your Holy Spirit, God, through our own baptism, which calls us, which calls us to be your servants and your love in action. Show us how to do that, God, as this past year has felt more like a baptism of a different sort, a baptism of loss, grief, and sorrow. The pandemic has taken more than 330,000 from us in the United States alone. The virus has turned our world upside down in so many challenging ways, yet it also has demonstrated our resolve by the unfailing efforts of our healthcare professionals and other essential workers who have risked their own lives so the rest of us can receive the necessities we need, everything from life-saving health care to groceries and toilet tissue. Please be with health care and other frontline workers who have and continue to be there for us. Please be with those who have lost loved ones, their livelihoods, and their regular routines of life, from going to school to visiting loved ones and friends. Let us feel your spirit and know that you are with us every step of the way, no matter how difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, be with those who are dealing with physical, emotional, and spiritual distress, including those we now name aloud or in silence. Let us know your healing touch and bring into our lives the health care workers and other caregivers we need to be renewed in our body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we enter the new year, there is renewed hope with the vaccines as they become more widely distributed to those who can take it. Let us not forget that we still need to practice safety protocols. Help your spirit enliven us to be even more considerate and compassionate of others and take the necessary steps to protect each other. We are all our brothers and sisters keeper. Help us unite in our efforts to protect ourselves and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Last year showed us in glaring ways our nation's deep inequities. Help us to take appropriate actions to make this a better world for all of us. Help us to have those hard conversations, recognize our biases, and act as you have taught us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Let your spirit, which was so graciously bestowed on us at our baptism and lives within us, to help us open our hearts to others and accept all as our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we progress through the new year, help us remember that we are all connected. You have created an intricate web of life that we are all part of. Help us take care of each other by taking care of our earth, our natural resources, and all the animals and fellow humans who inhabit our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to find common ground and come together as a nation for the good of all. Yes, we are all individuals with distinct opinions, but you created us to live in community and to be there for each other. Let your spirit be emboldened within us this year so that we can find ways to connect and build each other up. Because as President Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Help us to find ways to connect and grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us join together in the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John. He did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one. He came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news began. He came to share temptation, our utmost woe and loss. For us and our salvation, to die upon the cross. For when the dove descended, on him the Son of Man, hidden years had ended the age of grace began. Come, Holy Spirit, and us to keep the vows we made. This very day invade us and every bondage break. Come, give our lives direction, the gift we covet most. To share the resurrection that leads to Pentecost. Receive this blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.